My name is Alan Haddon, uh, President of GSA, and I've had the pleasure to uh, moderate the convergence of broadcasting and broadband session today. Uh, an excellent panel uh, comprising broadcast and uh, mobile network experts. And we discussed a number of things, but really beginning with the definition of what did we mean by broadcast, um, because to many people broadcast is television. But it, we needed to separate the, the act of broadcasting, if you will, the, you know, the transmission of the content from the actual content itself and indeed the content production. But what stimulated the discussion, I think, is two things. One is that the changes we see in the market today, uh, the proliferation of uh, mobile broadband networks especially, how customers are using smartphones, the ownership is high, the usage is high, and the quality of those devices, the screens, the video presentation, all those aspects um, are driving huge interest in the market to, to use and own um, smartphones. By the, by the end of this decade, by 2020, we're forecasting around about uh, more than six billion smartphones will be in use globally. Now, what are people using these smartphones for? Well, first of all, they're using them on the mobile broadband networks, especially today, LTE, a global success, around about 350 networks live around the world, giving great experience, great quality, great speeds. And video is the driver for consumption. It's estimated that uh, not only do we see huge data growth on the network, something like 60% year-on-year growth, but we're seeing right now today around about 50% of mobile traffic is indeed data. By the end of the decade, just six years away, this could be 55, 60, even 70%, some people talk about. So video is the driver, and a part of that is, uh, if you like, traditional television programs, but of course there is other video content as well. The other driver is the availability of a technology which has been standardised for global use by 3GPP. It's called LTE Broadcast or EMBMS and this has the ability to deliver um, uh, for the operator network efficiencies in delivering um, multiple users video channels. So one example is that imagine many people want to watch the same content. Uh, what happened up until now has been each one would basically establish its own connection. With LTE broadcast the network sends this information out um, using one frequency. Effectively it's a single frequency network and you can regard that the user's smartphones are then effectively tuning in to tap into that content. So instead of having one-on-one -on -one sessions, it can be tens, hundreds, thousands. In reality, it can be without limits. And it can be on a small area, for example, in the confines of a, of a sports stadium, where uh, the, the, the customers, or shall we say the crowd, uh, watching the event have the opportunity to, to view uh, video content, video streams, uh, which can be complementary to the game, for example, that they're watching. Um, but it, it can be uh, in, in an area, a uh, part of a city, it can be in a region, or if the network uh, is so organised, it, it can be delivered nationwide. So it's a really win-win situation for the operator, that's clear, on efficiency and, and user experience. But what of the broadcaster? Well, LTE Broadcast is allowing uh, the operator, combined with broadband networks to deliver content to, to users, to customers, uh, on the go, wherever they are. Right now, across the world, there are about 20 uh, trials, which brings together mobile network people, uh, content providers uh, and broadcasters to explore how this technology, together with broadband, can, can help them uh, develop or s uh, evolve their services. So there's many trials uh, taking place in all regions of the world and the expectation is that it could generate new revenue possibilities um, for the broadcaster or the content, if you like, the delivery of the content and while at the same time it could create new business models and new revenue streams for, for the network users. Um, one, I think, important point that came out is what we're really seeing here is the, is the, is the getting together, I wouldn't quite yet say mar marriage 
of, of two uh, well-established uh, giant industry sectors. That's the mobile network, which has historically been regulated uh, from a telecoms background. And then we have the television broadcast, uh, whose uh, regulation is, is very much driven by media policy. So at some point, the, the policy makers need to establish um, not only how and when such content could be provided on mobile broadband networks, but also to decide which content may or may not be uh, appropriate to deliver on the mobile broadband networks. So I think it's the beginning of a very interesting era. Um, the ecosystem for the smartphones themselves needs to develop because they do need a, a, a chip capability within them, but already the first products are coming and uh, many of the major manufacturers are indicating that they will support LTE broadcast. I think one final thing, part of the debate, would be, well, does that mean that, that delivering television content uh, over mobile broadband networks one day will replace the delivery in the more conventional way of terrestrial TV networks? And I think we can say here that the panel, none of the panel, uh, from all their backgrounds, thought that this was really uh, likely to happen, at least not in the, not in the near term. Um, but we do see many opportunities for the broadcast industry and the mobile industry to cooperate perhaps with, with hybrid delivery models and with new um, service plans and new business models um, which will effectively enhance those services uh, and improve the user experience. And at the end of the day, uh, what everybody's interested in is, is enhancing the user experience. So I was very pleased to be able to have this uh, stimulating session it was well attended, there were excellent questions from the audience and uh, I'm sure that the discussions will continue in the future. <laughs>